Hey, hey, I'm Elise Cartwright and I help multi-passionate creative entrepreneurs develop a money-making marketing plan using the human design framework so that they can create consistent income every single month. And if you stick around, you will discover that right here on this video and all other videos, you're going to get actionable, simple strategies that you can implement into your business to do things that are just simply easy and fun for you. Okay, so give me about 10 minutes and I am going to walk you through how to use your human design chart and today we're focusing on strategy. I get this question a lot in my Digital Income Accelerator membership where people are looking to implement and integrate their own chart into their business. The very first thing that I always start people on and help them understand is how are you using your strategy? What does that really look like in your business? So I'm going to walk you through that. I'm going to do my best to keep this to 10 minutes. I have a tendency to kind of go off script, uh, actually, and I'm not even sticking to a script, but I really want to make sure that this is short and sweet so that you can implement as you go. So here's the thing, I am going to move myself out of the way and literally just walk you through this document. Now you can grab this document below this video or above the video, however that is working, depending on what platform you're viewing this on. But basically we are just gonna run through the five different types and strategies. So your type determines your strategy. That's how that works. So there are five types. So there is a manifester, generator, manifesting generator, projector, and reflector. So I always start with the manifester. And really the manifester strategy is I make things happen, right? Literally you are the person in the business world who has an idea and implements, right? Goes off and starts the thing. Don't always have the energy to finish all the things, but that's totally fine definitely recommend having someone in your business to help you kind of finish off all the things. But really when it comes to your offers, when it comes to creating things in your business, you are the person that can just act on your urges. So anytime you have like this internal, oh, this is going to be so much fun. I just want to go ahead and do it. That's when you can just go ahead and do it. You can literally make it happen. The key though, is that you do need to inform and that's what your strategy is. Yes, you make things happen, but you are here to inform others about what you're doing. And the reason for that is because you often move very quickly. And when we're talking about this from a business perspective, your audience needs a little bit of time to one, understand what it is that you're doing because you're often ahead of the crowd, right? You are the person leading the space, the drive, whatever it is that you're doing. So your audience needs a little bit of time to kind of just understand and comprehend what it is that you're doing. And two, they don't move as quickly as you. So they just need to sit with it, understand it a little bit. So you, it will always serve you to really share whatever it is that you're working on, like to be super transparent in your business. And tangibly, it really does look like this. You get an idea, you're super pumped about it, it's an urge, you're just like, yes, I wanna do this. I'm gonna send an email out to my audience. I'm just gonna say, hey guys, here's what I'm thinking, here's what I'm planning to do. This is coming your way in the next few days. And then off you go. If you wanted to post that on social media, you could do the same thing. But at its core, that's what informing is all about, is simply letting your audience know of what's coming down the pipeline so that they're not surprised, that they're not sitting there going, I don't even know why Lise is talking about this when she was talking about this about three weeks ago. And that is part of being the amazingness of a manifester, but it can also be a slight challenge because you may do lots of different things. Multi-passionate, totally fine to do that. The way that you balance the multi-passion is that you're really specific around who your offers are for, like the audience, right? That's how you can be multi-passionate. You can do lots of different things. So you're really specific about who each of your offers are for, and then you'll have no problem. So if you can just remember, 
Whenever I'm super excited about this thing, I am going to just simply give my audience a heads up. And that goes for any kind of marketing too, right? If you're going to do a flash sale or anything like that, give them a heads up. They don't like surprises. So that's what it looks like for a manifester. But what if you're a generator? So my beautiful, lovely generators, you are here to respond. And the waiting to respond is simply just a few check marks that you have to go through, particularly when it comes to creating offers, because you are here to respond to everything external, to never act on anything internal in terms of ideas, right? You can have all the ideas, but not all of them will always be yours to move forward with. So your goal is to always ask yourself the following questions. Number one, is my gut on board? Because you're a sacral being, your gut is always going to be your guiding light. So are you getting that heck yes feeling about whatever idea it is that you've got? So that's step one in terms of creating an offer. Step two is ensuring that you're actually responding to something external. And that could be something that you saw on social media. It could be in response to an email that you had. It could be a response to literally anything, as long as it's external, right? It's not internal. It could be your audience asking you questions and you're going, wow, you know what? I think I should create something to serve my audience better. That's what creating in response really looks like. The waiting to respond comes in when we cannot confirm where the external prompt is from. So that's really all that that is about for a generator. So in your business, remember, follow your gut and ensure that you are responding to something external. And ideally, you're responding to something that your audience is actually asking for or struggling with. They don't always ask, right? Our audience isn't always going to go, hey, Lise, can you just create this thing and I'll totally buy it? That does not often happen until you start to have conversations with your audience and you set up response mechanisms. But bottom line, Follow your gut, respond to something external. Just make sure that you're doing that. And if you can't figure out what that res that external piece was, then you are stepping into waiting to respond. You're literally waiting for the universe to send you signs. And that's what you would do. If you can't figure out where that external prompt is coming from, then you just ask the universe, hey universe, I'm super excited about creating this offer. Send me some signs that this is for me to do something with. And then all your job is, is to pay attention to the signs that remind you of that idea, of that offer that you're looking to create. That's it. You can also just simply send an email out to your audience and say, hey, I've got an idea. I'm thinking about this. What do you think? And then if people respond, that gives you something to respond to. So you can create response in your business by doing things like that. Okay, so bottom line, follow your gut, respond to something external, make sure that that is in place. Now, manifesting generators, I happen to be a manifesting generator and we are part manifester and part generator. So our strategy is both to respond and inform and we respond first, right? We are at our core sacral beans, so we have to do that piece first. So what that really looks like for us is exactly what I just said from the generator perspective, we need to ensure that we are getting a heck yes from our gut and we need to ensure that we are creating in response to something external, right? So definitely those two things still apply. But then we also need to inform. And the reason why we need to inform is that we, out of all the types, move the fastest. And so many things will light up our sacral that we can overcommit, right? We can start doing all the things and then all of a sudden find ourselves in a situation where we have said yes to all the things. So the informing piece gives us an opportunity to just take a beat. And I do find that this works extremely well. So you might get your initial yes from your sacral and you're super excited. You're confirming that you're responding. So then what you're going to do is exactly what we talked about for manifestors is you're literally going to send an email to your audience and say, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? Or create a wait list. It's your best opportunity to ensure that you are responding, right? If people raise their hand for a wait list, now you've got something to respond to and it gives you an indication, right? Some data points. Data is extremely important for those of us who have a defined sacral. So for us, it's very clear. 
Am I getting a heck yes from my sacral? Am I responding to something external? And then once I get that green light that I am responding to something external, then I'm going to inform, right? Then I'm going to let my audience know, hey, this is what I'm thinking. This is what I'm working on. It's coming your way soon, right? Those types of scenarios and potentially adding in a wait list if you feel so inclined. Now, you're also someone who's going to pivot and tweak and refine and do things on the go, very much like a manifester. You're also going to have multi offers, right? Typically tend to be multi-passionate. Same deal. You need to be really specific about who your offer is for. Then let's chat to projectors. So my lovely projectors, your strategy is all about waiting to be invited. But in order for that to actually happen, there's like a precursor step that you also need to be doing in order to be invited. So with your offers, you don't need to create in response. You need to, you don't need to wait or anything like that. Go ahead and create the things based on your insight, knowledge, and wisdom, right? You have typically have a very specific zone of genius that you're just like, this is the thing that I love to do and I can talk about all day, every day. So create your offers around that. But when it comes to putting them out into the world, that is when you do need to have the invitation. So in order for that to happen, you need to have some form of visibility, some way of sharing with your audience all the time, right? So on a fairly consistent basis, just sharing insights and wisdom based around your offers, right? So really sharing the insights, the things that you notice, the things that you see people kind of tripping up with, and then you get the opportunity to include in your PS when you're ready, here's how I can help, and then you link to your offers. Very low key, very low effort, but waiting to be invited ensures that you are not oversharing when someone isn't quite ready to receive the amazingness that you have. So finally, we have a reflector. So my reflectors are the beautiful unicorns of this planet. There are only around 2% of you in this world, and I'd be highly surprised that you're actually watching this video. So if you are, I'd love for you to comment below. But reflectors are people who are mirrors to their entire environment. So you're always just going to reflect back exactly what is going on in your vicinity. So in terms of creating and doing anything in your business, it is very much about understanding that you need time to absorb and reflect on everything that's going on because you're a chameleon, right? You literally from day to day could be any one of the other strategies because the moon and sun transit through all of the centers and gates in any given cycle, right? You're, you're a lunar cycle. So for you, you could be experiencing high energy and then next week, no energy at all. So what you're doing is paying attention to the signs that continue to support whatever it is that you're really excited about. So if you continue to feel really good about something and having conversations with people that you trust is another way for you to just continue to feel into that and you will just simply know when the time is right. So very fluid, very much going with the flow based on the 28 or to 29 lunar cycle. So that is what it looks like to truly create based on your specific strategy. And so your action step now is to simply figure out what works best for you based on your human design strategy and start to implement it into your business. Based on what we just talked about, what is that going to look like for you? And it's probably going to be asking some questions, letting your audience know what is going on or sharing insights, knowledge and wisdom, right? taking a step back and using your strategy daily is going to help you figure out all of those components. Now you can download this particular document below and I will see you in another video. Take care.